In this video, I'll show you how to create an infrared panorama using Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop. This series of shots was taken with a camera converted to a 590 nanometer infrared filter. It has a 24 megabit APS-C sensor, but when we're done, we should be more than 100 megabits with the final image. And this used a 50 millimeter lens. Now, one of the advantages of creating a panorama in Adobe Lightroom is that with the DNG format that the panorama is created in, you can set settings to the, to the raw file either before or after you create the panorama. And so I will show you both. First of all, let's, let's create some settings for one of these images. So I will double click on one image and then I will hit the D key to open up the develop module. The first thing that I need to do is to select a color profile. I'll need a custom color profile. I've created a custom profile for my camera and I'll include a link at the top of the screen for you to create your own custom profile for managing color infrared photos. So I will select this and close and now I have a little bit more latitude when it comes to setting a white balance. So just to get started here we will set the white balance on the clouds. So I'm set with this image. I'm going to hit G to return to my grid view. I'll select my first image. Then I can hit hold down the shift key and select the final image to select all of the images. Now I can click on sync settings, check all and synchronize. And this will apply the profile and the white balance to all of the images. Now I can create my pano. So let's right click on one of the images and select photo merge panorama. Now that we're in the uh, Panorama Merge Preview, we have a number of options that we can select from. There are two major considerations that we have to have for dealing with a panorama, mainly because this was shot handheld and the alignment isn't perfect. If you'd like to get a perfect pano that avoids some of these issues, you can shoot with a tripod with a panoramic head and a nodal slide, uh, which will create a perfect alignment, but if you're just shooting handheld or don't have that level of precision, you'll have to work with projections and edges in order to solve these problems. So first thing I want to do is figure out a projection. Then the next thing I'll do is look at the edges. When it comes to the projection, I like to look at the various projections and see what the result is going to be on the image. In this case, the spherical projection kind of stretches the image horizontally. The cylindrical uh, projection stretches the image vertically and the uh, perspective projection doesn't have as much stretching. I like the I like the balance here a little bit. It, the, the results will vary for the subject matter of your image, which one of these projections will look the best and also which one has different impacts on how the edges look. For this image, I'll use the perspective projection. Now when it comes to the edges, I can use the boundary warp to stretch the image out to the edges, that's one choice. Or I can use fill edges to allow Lightroom to guess with how the edges should look. If you have a very small amount of edge, that might work well, but with the large edges in this image, you can see uh, it doesn't figure it out so well. So we're gonna uncheck fill edges. And then the other option you have is auto crop, which would simply crop in on the image where it's at now. But this will reduce the overall size. What I like to do is usually some combination of these. If an image looks good with boundary warp at 100, this image actually does, so that's probably what I'll use. Uh, for some images that don't, I might try a slightly lower setting of boundary warp, maybe some 50, 75, something in that range. And then the, the edge challenge that I have is less, and then if I want to use fill edges or a crop at that point, then it's a little bit easier to manage. Um, so that's that's a really good technique you can use is to combine uh, these various uh, ed edge management techniques. But for the sake of this image, I'm going to set boundary warp to 100 because I like the look and I will click merge. Now the panorama will take a little bit of time to put together. Our panorama is complete, so I can double click on this image to open it up and then I'll hit the D key uh, to go to the develop module. So now that I'm here, as I mentioned earlier, because this is still a DNG file, I still have the full white balance control and other settings you would normally get with a raw file, which is, which is really convenient. So let's take a look at the white balance again. There's lots of things you can do with white balance. I'll link to another video where you can explore all of the creative choices that you have around white balance. Uh, originally, as I mentioned, I white balanced off the clouds. 
but you could also come in and use the sliders and make some adjustments. So for example, if I want a little bit more what will ultimately be blue color in my sky, I can slide this over to the right, the, the temperature slider to get a, a little more orange in the sky, which I know will later on be result in blue in the sky. Now I've uh, tweaked my white balance and now I'm ready to head over to Photoshop. So let's right click on the image and select edit in Photoshop. Okay, so now that the image is open in Photoshop, I will hit Control-0 uh, to resize it fully. Now I will uh, create an inverted version of this to, to get the colors where I'd like them. So we'll start with a Control-J to create a duplicate layer, and then Control-I to invert that layer. Now that I have that inverted layer, I can select the Blend Mode and change the Blend Mode to Color. So one thing that I'd like to do while I'm here in Photoshop is use the Healing Brush to clean up some of my edges. So I'll select the healing brush and we'll come over here and remove some of these distractions over on the left and then at the bottom of the screen we've got a little bit of distraction here with this other tree. All right, so uh, now we will head back over to Lightroom. So let's save this image. Okay, now we're back in Lightroom and I can continue to make adjustments here in Lightroom uh, as well. Let's take a look at the size of my final image because I'm curious as to how big uh, this, this final panorama is. So if I hit the E key, I can go back to the library uh, module and from here I can see the metadata. I'll pull up a calculator and based on the, the metadata, I can see that the, the dimensions of this new image are 12,540 pixels wide. Uh, by 8,321 pixels tall. And that gives me a result of 104 megapixels. So we went from a, a 24 megapixel sensor, took a dozen images, and after merging them together, we now have a final image that is 104 megapixels, which is just slightly more than the size of some of the best uh, medium format digital cameras. So that's a really great result. Now that you have this very large size file, you can crop without worrying about losing quality. You can print at a very large size. You have a great deal of flexibility with this large size panorama. So that was how to create an infrared panorama using Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks.